Hey everyone, Sumo Spiffy here. It's that time again where we take the vagaries of Sumo, calculate them down to precise letter grades, and rank everyone in the top division. Bear in mind, this is being recorded the Monday before the Basho, with the most recent Chris Sumo injury updates in mind. I delayed recording to get as much information as possible, but updates beyond this point may still further change what we can expect from certain guys, so bear that in mind between now and the start of the tournament. Alright, let's get into it. Terano Fuji, S, injury tier as always. Apparently he's been in a lot of pain while practicing, and combined with his Kyujo last time, it would normally seem to suggest he's going to take a few tournaments off. But right now it looks like he'll compete, maybe as a last hurrah. If that's true, it means he might try to bulldoze through a level of pain he normally wouldn't, and there's no way to know how that'll go. He's still the Kaiju, but as risky a fantasy pick as ever. Hoshoryu and Kotozakura. I gotta get used to saying Kotozakura. Anyway, both of them are A tier. Hoshoryu pipped Koto by one last time, but Koto had two frankly shocking losses to Takakesho and Kirishima near the end, so I still slightly favor him over the prodigal nephew. But both are still guys you should expect at least 10 wins from, and are still unlikely to be bad picks in any fantasy game. Takakesho, B, injury tier. Gotta figure the end is nigh for the battle hamster. Usually if he misses a tournament, he comes back on fire before his body starts falling apart again. March started out looking that way, given that he started 7-2, but he collapsed almost instantly after that, getting ultra yeeted by Onosato on day 11, and it's frankly a miracle he got his 8th win against Ozeki Koto so he could dip out and save himself some extra bruises. Logic alone says that since he's not Kataban now, he'll probably drop out if his body starts acting up too much, and Chris's most recent report indicates he's not certain to compete at all. If he does take part, he's an extremely risky pick in any fantasy game where you're stuck with guys for the whole Basho, but he could be useful in games where you can replace someone who goes Kyujo. Kirishima, A, Injury Tier. As it turned out, Kiri was rocking injuries to his neck, back, and both elbows last Basho. So, at the very least, we've seen how far he can fall if his body doesn't cooperate. It also means that we have no reason to think he's incapable of competing at the level we're used to seeing once he recovers from those injuries. But word is that his neck is a pretty serious concern in practice, which seems doubly bad considering how well the Michinoku team did at keeping his injuries last Basho quiet. If he somehow recovers fully, he could be the guy, but how willing are you to believe in that outcome? Wakamoto Haru, B tier. He spent a year in the Sanyaku as an incredibly reliable performer with 5 straight Bashos of 9 or more wins and two 10-win tournaments in Maegashira before that. What he's done so far this year makes his 6-9 and nine in November look like a blip, and with the failing health of those above him in the ranks, there's no realistic reason to think he'll get fewer than 8 wins. Abi, C-. His 9-6 and six last tournament was his best Sanyaku performance since 2019, and he looked like he had something to prove. Question number one, though, is has he proven it, or will the motivation to come out like a killer still be there? And number two, are there enough wins available on a Sekiwake schedule for him to reach Kachikoshi? There are no more weak links like Nishikigi to smack around. He's been superb against Wakamoto Haru, but that's only one match. He tends to do well against Takakesho, but that matchup seems unlikely. If Keisho fights at all, he'd likely have to make it to week two for Abi to face him. On the plus side, he may avoid Asanoyama and Takeru Fuji due to their injuries. Basically, his odds of a winning record could swing significantly depending on who's in and who's out, but even in the best case scenario, I wouldn't trust him over Wakamoto Haru or Ono Sato. Asanoyama, B, Injury Tier. He's dealing with an MCL injury, although it may not be as serious as initially thought given that Chris referred to it as a tweak. Still, he hasn't been practicing, and his coach seems to believe it's not a big deal if he takes one off to heal and has to climb the ladder again. There's no official word on whether he's in yet, but I suspect this might be like November, where he sits out at the start and then might come back for the last half of the tournament if he feels ready enough. Ono Sato, high B tier. Essentially, if everyone was in reasonably good shape, I think he's got a very good chance to hit 10 wins, but it's not quite a given. However, with the number of high-level guys who look like physical wrecks right now, he becomes borderline A tier. On the plus side, he's coming off back-to-back 11 and 4 records. Three of his losses in each tournament were to the same guys, and one of them, Onosho, is just out of range for them to get matched up as part of the natural scheduling scheme. However, he's 0-2 against both Hoshoryu and Kotozakura, who he absolutely will face in the first week. 
He's 0-1 against Teru no Fuji, and while Teru's health is a huge question mark, they're going to meet on day 1 when Teru will be at whatever counts as peak health for him. His other Makauchi losses to Takeru Fuji, and this is where the A or B question really turns. Takeru's ankle is apparently in worse shape than I thought, because initially there was a question of whether he'll compete at all, and there's still a concern, assuming he competes, of the limited practice time and how that might affect him. Beyond that, Ono Sato's never fought Atami Fuji, Takiyasu, Tobizaru, and Ura, and apart from Atami, those guys are more than capable of finding some weakness they can exploit. He's the obvious pick of the Komusubi, and I'd argue probably better than Wakamoto Haru if you have to choose between them, but Wak is still good if you prefer more of a known quantity. Atami Fuji, C-. Atami got his Kachikoshi early in March, going 8-5 by day 13 before dropping his last two. But his losses to Oho, Daesho, and Meisei, who all struggled, were a little troubling in terms of his consistency, and he didn't exactly beat a murderer's row to get those eight wins. That being said, if any stable can refine a wrestler and sand off the rough edges of their performance, it's Isigahama, so at any point we could see Atami Fuji with a new approach that really starts taking people to the woodshed. But until that happens, it looks like he might be riding a 50-50 record all the way to the end of the Basho. Daesho, C+. When Wakamoto Haru went 6-9 and dropped, I also tagged him C+, because I thought the fact his 6-9 record happened at all might mean something. Obviously, now it doesn't look like it meant anything other than he had a bad go of it one time. With Daesho, though, it's easier to see how Last Basho might be more than a one-off. He completely sleepwalked through the first three days, but even if he hadn't, I'd have a hard time seeing that Basho turn out better than 8-7. and seven. The competition is catching up, and I'm not sure his body, his style, or both can hit a new level that lets him maintain another extended run of success in the Sanyaku. I still think he's better than 50-50 to get a winning record here because if he does struggle a bit, having a Magashira schedule towards the end rather than a Sekiwaki one could make all the difference, but I would be quite surprised if he replicates Waka's 10 wins from January. Here to Umi, D tier with a possible upgrade to C-. I called him D tier last time and he made me look silly, and really I'm fine with that. I like his style and I'm glad to see him find success, but part of the reason for thinking he'd have a losing record was that at the Joy Border, I figured he'd have more than three Sanyaku matchups and they'd crush him. As it turned out, he won two of those three, but those were against Kiri and Daesho, who were obviously not at their best. One of his wins was thanks to the Ura hair pull, and it was the right call, but Ura had him beat without the hair pull. So a full Sanyaku run should make him 100% D tier. However, if Takakeshu and Asanoyama are out, that removes two major roadblocks, and if Kirishima is still a mess, that could be enough to at least give him a chance at 8 wins. He doesn't look like a great pick under any circumstances, but he could go from bad to not that bad depending on everyone else's status. Gonoyama, C-. He had a fine performance last tournament, and even though he benefited from two Fusen wins, they were against Surugisho and Tobizaru, who he was odds-on to beat anyway. He seems to be adjusting his game to account for the fact better opponents can abuse his aggression, but the adjustment isn't happening that quickly, and aggression is still his calling card. Plus, he makes some very odd decisions at times. It blows my mind, for example, that he faced Takeru Fuji after Takeru's ankle injury and opted into a grappling match. As with most of the joy, the Sanyaku injuries improve his odds of success, and he's good enough that he could squeak out a winning record even if he does struggle thanks to a downgrading competition later on, so I don't think he'll look as bad as he did going 5-10 in January, but it's hard to see a highly successful Basho this time around. Takayasu, B, Injury Tier Not that long ago, I may have made him A Injury Tier, but his 11-4 in March might offer some false hope. When he went 10-5 from Magashira 7 in September, for example, he started 8-1, then ended up losing to Atami on his big run, Normal Daesho, Uninjured Hokuto Fuji, and Kirishima it was a clear upgrade in competition. This time he somehow lost to Shodai and Matakeyumi on days 4 and 6, even though at this point in their careers he should absolutely smoke them. That led to a schedule which never became overly challenging, so he kinda softballed his way to 11 wins. He didn't even get a special prize for his 11 and 4 Jun Yu show because it just wasn't that impressive. He's absolutely capable of winning at this level, and 10 wins is certainly within his capability, but even if he looks reasonably healthy throughout, 10 wins might also be his realistic cap. Tobizaru, C-. Even though he only went up a half rank, it's the half rank that's much more likely to ensure a full Sanyaku run. On top of that, 
Some of the Maegashira guys around him have been tough for him in the recent past, like Atami Fuji and Hiro Umi. Even worse, he's stuck in this middle ground where he might be able to avoid both Onosato and Takeru Fuji, but he might also pull them both as well. I never want to discount our precious Toby, but there are a lot of pitfalls waiting for him here. Oho, D tier. He's gonna get some Sanyaku fights, even if it's only two or three, and remember, he was only four and eight last Basho before he got some of the weakest matchups possible on days 13 and 14. If you want to accuse me of being a hater, I'll save you the trouble. I absolutely am. But he hasn't fallen quite far enough in rank to get a schedule he might be able to succeed with. Aura, C+. Given that Takakesho and Asano Yama may not compete, and Teru no Fuji seems insistent on taking part but doesn't seem like he's gonna last the whole time, that means Pinky's almost certainly gonna get dragged up into more Sanyaku matchups than might otherwise be the case. However, those will come later on, and until then, he's got a good number of winnable matchups around him on the Banzuke. This only gets boosted further if it turns out Takeru Fuji can't compete or has to drop out early. Given that we know he can take some wins off the higher ranks, if he performs like he's capable of against his fellow rank and file at the start, it should only take a couple of Sanyaku wins to earn Akashi Koshi. Onosho, C, Injury Tier Onosho's coming off a 9-6 record preceded by a 10-5. Those were at lower ranks, but on the plus side, the only bad loss he had last Basho was to Ryuden. Things are going to be tougher now, but if he's able to hold together like he has the last two tournaments, there are enough soft targets around him that he should be able to start strong and at least hold on for a winning record. But guys with creaky knees and relatively recent issues with those knees are always a risky proposition, even if they don't look terribly hurt. He's one of the more reliable injury tier guys right now, but I'd still stay away from him in fantasy if seeing one of your guys drop out feels especially bad. May say, C+. Being in the joy and having that type of schedule is clearly too much for him at this point in his career. But when he dips low enough to avoid the big boys, he does fine. He's a decent pick because if he just does okay to start, he'll probably keep doing okay, but if he takes off early, the schedule will knock him back down. Because he's still high enough that it wouldn't take much for him to get stuck against some Sanyaku opponents, I'm reluctant to predict a definite winning record, but it seems pretty likely. One caveat, his struggles in the joy indicate that he's just not physically able to compete against the highest level guys now. That eventually fades into struggling against mid-rank guys as well. I don't have reason to think he's going to fade like that yet, but once the process starts, a major drop-off is always possible. Takeru Fuji, S, Injury Tier I mean, you saw what this dude did in March. Everyone gets figured out eventually, but if you're physically overwhelming, you can still find wins, and that's where he's at right now. The one point of concern, of course, is his sprained ankle, and initially I figured that being able to adjust and beat Gonoyama the day after the injury meant he'd be fine for May. Apparently that's not the case though. He only just returned to practice, and this is probably the longest he's ever gone without regular training. He's obviously S tier at Magashira 6 normally, and I'd be surprised if he competes 15 days and finishes with a losing record no matter how gimpy he looks. But there's no way to know what state he'll be in until we see him fight. Midori Fuji, B tier. I had him at B tier at a higher rank last time, and he was right in line to get his winning record until he took extremely surprising losses to Onosho and Sada no Umi. I'm willing to bet on him again, especially since now he's out of range of Hiro to Umi, Onosato, and probably Gonoyama, who handed him three of his losses last time. If he struggles here, it might be a sign that the little guy is getting figured out too well, kinda like what happened to Enho. But Midori's bigger and stronger than Enho, and I don't think he's gonna hit that wall yet. Nishikigi. Ah god, who knows with this guy. Ah, uh, I guess C+. He's obviously a disaster in the Sanyaku, but at Maegashira 7, he should be okay. He's surrounded by old school guys who are probably willing to fight him face up the way he likes, which should help him pick up a few wins. He's still way too slow on the Tachiai, so some of this might come down to whether he actually adjusts this time, or if not, whether a bunch of opponents try to take advantage. I'm probably being generous making him C+, but just take this as very close to 50-50 for him to get a winning record. The exact schedule he pulls will be more influential in his outcome than it is for most guys. Matakiyumi, C-. Since he last fought in the Joy back in July, he has three winning records and one losing one. He should, for the most part, be okay at this level. And if you look at some of the head-to-heads against his likely competition, it doesn't look like he should do too badly. Logically, he should squeak in as a C+. 
but he also rides a very thin line between winning and losing records, he's got much tougher competition, not that many ranks above him, and I just have this feeling something's gonna go sideways on it. I think calling either a 7-8 and eight or 8-7 eight and seven record is safer than trying to predict whether he'll have a losing or winning record, it's that close. I just like the chances of some of the guys around him more. Takano Sho, C-. Very similar to Matakiyumi in that he does fine at this level, but there are enough guys who should give him trouble, and guys who I think have a better chance at success, that I think it's more likely he eats just enough competitive losses to end up with a losing record. Kota Shoho, C-. He had one nice win last Basho against Onosho. The others were against guys he should beat consistently anyway, three of whom aren't even in the division anymore. There are fewer winnable matchups now, and coming off an 8-7 and seven record, that's not a great sign. But there's so much mediocrity around him that it's hard to shove him into D tier. Tamawashi, C+. Kind of a flip side to Kota Shoho. His 7-8 and eight record doesn't look great, considering he only even got that by beating Kitana Waka and Miyogiryu the last two days, but he's not going to have to deal with Onosho, Takeyasu, Gonoyama, or Onosato this time, and there's no one of that caliber in his neighborhood. I'm calling solid odds on Akachi Koshi from him in the 60-70% to 70 range. Shodai, C, injury tier. Same thing as last time. Shodai's mental is so trashed that it's hard to know when he'll show up and when he'll break down. I mean, this is a guy who beat Takeyasu last Basho, then lost to Dayamami four days later. Yeah, weird wins and losses are part of sumo, but seeing that and not being surprised is particular to Shodai. If you want to lean one way or the other, I'll say C+, because his likely win range is 7-9, to nine, but he's still the most untrustworthy wrestler in terms of calling his wins and losses. Shonen Umi, B tier. He started out like a monster in March, picking up 7 wins in 8 matches after an opening loss to Sada no Umi, and the only loss in that streak was to Takeru Fuji. Then his schedule got tougher, he dropped fights to Takeyasu and Abi, and then just didn't look so good the last few days as he did at the start. Even so, he's clearly a step above the competition around this rank, and it's incredibly hard to imagine him stumbling to a losing record at Magashira 10. Kinbozan, B tier. Like Shonen Umi, he's just better than the guys around him. He took a terrible fall in March and only missed a couple of days, then nearly spun the downgraded schedule he got into a winning record. I don't think his health is problematic enough to tag him an injury risk, and he might have more upside at this rank than Shonen Umi, but you still might want Shona Naumi if you have to pick between them and want a safer choice. Sada Naumi, C+. Sada Naumi got off to a great start in March, going 6-2 in the first week, but then got hit with Chur Naumi, Onosho, and Takeyasu, against whom he's now a combined 4-25. and Head-to-head -head might not mean a ton in sumo generally, but it usually does when the numbers are that skewed. Takeyasu and Onosho might be out of range now, but I also have my doubts he'll start 6-2 and two again, so we're probably looking at another battle for his Kachikoshi going into the last few days. What pushes me towards C+, is that at Magashira 11, he's likely to have some matches against the guys coming up from Jurio, and he should match up well with them. Hokuto Fuji, C, Injury Tier. Give Captain Faceplan his flowers. He was 1-7 after 8 days, but managed to spin that into a 6-9 record. He can still beat the ones who don't belong in the division, of which there are always a few, and if his knee is improving, a winning record is well within his capability. But without news on his health, we have no way to know how that knee is affecting him, which makes him an inherently risky pick. Ichi Yamamoto, C+. Like Sada Naumi, a big part of this is because he's going to face some of the Jurio promo tees. More to his advantage, though, is that he was in Jurio recently, and thus more familiar with him. I don't expect him to beat Shona Naumi or Kin Bozan, but he should have a decent chance against everyone else, and I'm leaning more towards 8 wins than 7. Nishiki Fuji, high C+. I hate the eye test, but I'm mainly basing this on the fact he just doesn't look like he's got the same capacity as when he was bouncing much higher in Maegashira a year plus ago. He did finish with a couple of tough matchups last tournament, pulling Gonoyama and Shodai with his Kachikoshi already locked up, and there's no reason to believe he'll do worse than 8 and 7 this time. The difference between him and someone like Shona Naumi, though, is that where I can see Shona Naumi clearly being better than a lot of his opponents, it's more common that I watch Nishiki Fuji get the job done, but think about how the match could have gone the other way. So, not B tier, C+. Alright, last time I grouped a bunch of guys who I didn't expect to do well, and every one of them finished with a losing record. I see a similar situation here, so let's do it again. Mito Ryu, 
Shurnaumi, Roga, and Takara Fuji, C minus. Ryudin and Tomokaze, C injury tier. None of these guys, apart from Ryudin, have shown themselves to be really Makauchi level. I know churnaumi has been sticking around, but a lot of his wins in Makauchi have come against fading stars or Jurio regulars who are about to get shot straight back down. Maybe there's enough of them here to swing a winning record, but if he doesn't get a third straight 7 and 8, I think worse is more likely than better. And the Ryudin who might appear to have physical issues but should normally wreck guys at this level doesn't appear to exist anymore. He still had his clever game plans in March, but he couldn't make him work to the extent he usually does. For him, injury tier seems more correct because it's still not clear if he'll have yet another tournament where he pulls it together and fights like he did in the relatively recent past, but expecting another low rank 10 and 5 from him seems more like a dream than it did a year ago. As for the rest, Mitoru is simply not Makauchi level. He should be big enough and strong enough to at least hang at the bottom of the division, but the chances he's had haven't gone well. Roga got a little screwed at the end of March, reaching 7 and 6 but then having to face Takayasu before he got a Darwin match against Kota Shoho. But his first three wins were against Endo, Kitanawaka, and Dayamami, all of whom are now gone. If Kyujo's result in Makauchi vs. Jurio matches, he's set to face Dai Shoho, who he's 0-4 against. He still has the physical ability, but until he shows more game, I'm calling very low odds of a winning record here, like 10-20%. I initially placed Takara Fuji in C+, but then I realized it's because I hope he does well and I definitely huffed the copium. He just physically ain't got it enough to think he has a legit shot at a winning record. And Tomokaze's got one functioning foot. Everyone knows it, everyone will attack it. He'll still get some wins, but C injury tier is being nice about the fact he's got this permanent physical issue. As a group, these guys are very similar to the bottom batch from last Basho. Endo, Miyogiryu, Kitanawaka, Roga, and Dayamami. The best odds they have of getting a winning record is to pop off on everyone in the vicinity and pick up a couple more wins against legit Makauchi level guys. None of them are likely to do it, but all of them theoretically could, so they're C- picks. But we did skip a few. First of those, Oshoma, C+. I'm as surprised as anyone on making this pick, but it's almost impossible for the last 9 guys in the division to have losing records, so someone's gotta win. And even though he might make me look like an absolute moron, I think Oshoma's the most likely guy. He didn't look completely amazing in Jurio last Basho, but he was winning and, more to the point, not screwing around. It felt like every tournament before that consisted of pretty good wins and completely inexplicable losses. Losing to Kagiyaki and Tohakuryu definitely qualifies as bad losses, but after the latter one, he fought like he'd figured something out. The way he handled Wakataka Kage especially taking his moment and straight yoinking Waka out of the ring looked legitimately good. Granted, sometimes people get on a roll with whatever they're doing and then fade back to their normal selves later, but Oshoma's long been heralded as being capable of doing this regularly. If I was convinced he'd pass that hurdle, I'd make him B-tier, but for now, I'll just predict a probable winning record. Toki Hayate. I'd love to make him C-plus or better, but he's D-tier. He's improved noticeably of late, and his 10-5 and 5 in January was something of a coming out party, so I want to believe he can do well. By the way, if you don't pay much attention to Jurio and want an idea of the level of improvement, think about how much better Hiro Umi has looked recently versus his old self. And because of that clear improvement, I also don't want to hold it against him that the two Jurio tournaments before that 10-5 and 5 were both 8-7, and 7, and it was only good Banzuke Fortune that saw him nonetheless rise from Jurio 11 to Jurio 1 East in March. If he was ever going to succeed in Makauchi, it should be now, with a decent amount of equally vulnerable competition around it. But he's coming off another 8-7 and seven in March, and it's really difficult to see how someone who mostly squeaked out winning records in Jurio is going to find 8 wins in Makauchi. And Surugisho. B. Injury Tier. This rank is a mark of respect more than anything. We've seen over the last year that Tsurugisho is absolutely capable of scoring a winning record at this level, and if he'd gone Kyujo and dropped this far for some less serious reason than blowing out his whole ass knee, I'd hold out hope for an actual B-tier performance. But the only reason he'll go out there is to see what he can accomplish and, if nothing else, try to minimize just how far he falls into Jurio. It may not be wise, but he'll probably do it, and a lot of those C- guys we just discussed will pick up relatively straightforward wins. Speaking of the C- group, keep in mind I'm ranking them with the assumption Tsurugisho participates. If he goes Kyujo before the tournament or within a few days, some or all of these lower ranked guys will lose that relative freebie. Then the road to a winning record gets even tougher. 
I suppose he could also make their lives harder by being in shockingly good form and knocking them sideways, but let's not think about that. That ideal just set us up for disappointment. All right, that's the tier list. What do you think? Did we nail it? Is there anything that we got wildly, wildly wrong? Let us know in the comments. Other than that, the Takeru Fuji breakdown is coming out soon, so look for that, as well as another something special in the next few days. So I'm going to get back to the editing. Have a great day, and I'll see you soon.